I just want to thank Dr. Hennessy for a great talk. Uh, we're, Alphabet is very fortunate to have him as their chairman. Um, and uh, uh, Dwayne Adams, I guess, was uh, the DARPA PM who asked uh, Dr. Hennessy to perform uh, on, on the VLSI program. So kudos to Dwayne for picking a guy like John to work on that program. Um, I also want to thank John for his work uh, with PCAST and uh, the folks that helped pull that microelectronics report together. Uh, that was a real motivator uh, for DARPA, uh, for uh, myself, for Bill Chappell, uh, Jay Lewis, and others at DARPA who uh, took the report very seriously, uh, read it, and looked at the call out in the report for DARPA to look at leap, leapfrogging uh, where we are in microelectronics and really inventing the future, as Dr. Hennessy said. And so uh, I thank him for, for that work and service to the country. Um, those of you in this audience know DARPA's rich, his, re, uh, rich history in microelectronics, um, but you may not know some of the other uh, investments we made along the way. Our mission really along the way has been developing breakthrough technologies and capabilities for national security. Since 1958, so yes, we are 60 years old uh, this year, and uh, are proud of the fact that over those 60 years, uh, this relatively small R&D agency, uh, part of the Department of Defense, has really made the early pivotal investments in many of the technologies uh, uh, you see up there today. We really, in the 50s, invented material science, uh, worked, obviously, as you know, in uh, information technology, uh, connecting the first two computers uh, in the late 60s as part of the ARPANET, which led to the Internet. And then much of what you've heard uh, John Hennessy talk about uh, today in microelectronics, and I'll touch on a little bit, uh, came out of early investments by DARPA. So how do we continue that? Uh, and, and as we look back to how that worked in the past, uh, you know, the program that really uh, comes to mind uh, right, up, right up front and center is VLSI. And this program, the vision of it in the late 70s was really how do we um, provide integrated circuit technology to system designers at a large scale. And um, the program uh, MOSES, uh, Metal Oxide Semiconductor Impl Implementation Service, or MOSES, DARPA PMs love our acronyms, um, came out of the VLSI program and produced uh, a way for um, chip designers at the time to have access, again, as I said, to uh, large-scale integrated circuit technology. And really out of this program came the idea that you know, on one wafer you could uh, design uh, many different uh, circuits and have that produced at, at massive scale. And then the RISC program, Reduced Instruction Set Computer, which Dr. Hennessy himself worked on, uh, really led to uh, the RISC architecture is now found in uh, our cell phones today. Other things that came out of the LSI, um, the geometry engine, which led to the silicon graphics, uh, uh, formed the basis of silicon graphics incorporated. Um, Berkeley Unix uh, operating system, which went on to be used by many uh, developers. Um, the Stanford University Network micro uh, workstation project, which uh, along with Unix, uh, became uh, Sun Microsystems, and then new tools for CAD design. Uh, so this program had a huge impact on this industry uh, and, uh, and really led the way. More generally, um, if you look at government investment in electronics, uh, these are just three examples, the VLSI program and MOSES, um, RISC, and then the uh, ARPANET leading to the internet. Um, it's really, you know, and the internet, of course, starting with uh, an office director, Bob Kahn, uh, hiring Vint Cerf uh, at Stanford uh, to develop the TCP IP protocol, which we still use today. Um, so, you know, I get asked a lot by our allies. Uh, in the last, I don't know, three, four years, I've met with leadership in Germany, uh, uh, the UK, France, Japan, South Korea. How does DARPA do it? What is, what is this concept and how does it work? Um, after I explain the concept to them, I usually get um, stares and, uh, and uh, disbelief. 
about how we actually work with industry, how we work with universities to pull things like this off. Uh, we have a unique ecosystem in this country, fantastic universities, uh, a fantastic and robust commercial sector, a commercial sector that in the past has worked with the defense sector and continues to do so to produce technologies for national security, and a little agency called DARPA that, uh, that tries to tie it all together, uh, and that's part of what we're trying to do here in this conference, uh, this summit ERI. So a little advertisement. Um, we are celebrating DARPA's 60th anniversary this year uh, in September in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, we've got some luminaries in the field coming uh, to reflect on how this worked in the past, how this, how this agency called DARPA worked with the commercial and defense sectors and universities uh, to pull these technology developments off. Um, Surf and Khan will be there to describe the origins of the internet. Conway and Mead will be there uh, describing their contributions on the MOSES program and neuromorphic computing. We'll reflect on our history, but more importantly, we'll reflect on how this, how this ecosystem works and also where, where we're taking this ecosystem in the future and what are the technologies and uh, areas of research that DARPA is pursuing uh, moving, in, moving, moving forward. So I encourage you to register. Uh, registration's on our website. Uh, Please do so quickly because it's, it's probably ending here in the early August time frame. Uh, we'll have about 1,500 folks in D.C. at the D60 conference. Just a last slide to tell you what we're doing next and, and sort of whet your appetite about DARPA's next initiative. Uh, obviously, over the last year, after the PCAST report was uh, published on microelectronics, we work closely with OSD to, to build this ERI, this Electronics Resurgence Initiative. We're doing the same thing now uh, uh, for artificial intelligence. And so um, DARPA has had a, a rich, uh, rich history in this area as well, all the way back to the 60s uh, in developing some of the first rules-based AI systems, moving into stati statistical learning and deep learning uh, systems. Uh, and and we're doing a lot today to apply uh, those uh, techniques to uh, national security applications. We have 80 programs at DARPA right now touching AI in some way. About 25 of those programs are really building foundational AI tools. The rest are applying AI uh, for different aspects in national security. Um, what we want to do, um, and, and so some of those aspects, some of those uh, applications were uh, talked about by John, uh, applying AI to uh, cybersecurity, um, applying machine learning to electronic warfare, uh, looking at how we assure uh, autonomous systems and their AI, uh, AI uh, uh, techniques and tools that we use within them, and then trying to explain AI uh, to a user. Um, instead of getting a, uh, an answer and a, and a probability that it's right, telling the user of the AI system more about how the machine came up with the answer in our explainable AI program. So we're doing a lot today, but what we want to do is move from looking at computers as tools to computers as partners, trying to understand how machines can be used to reason, um, how they can be used, what are the theoretical foundations that would allow uh, contextual adaptation, uh, to allow machines to do that, and then what are some really unique applications in the national security space? Could we use AI uh, to do continuous clearances? Could we use AI to do certification in a day? Um, things along those lines. So just last Friday, uh, DARPA released uh, something called AIE. It's on our website, Artificial Intelligence Exploitation, or Exploration, excuse me. And um, what that's about is looking at short, 18-month-long um, uh, feasibility studies, uh, asking the community, asking our performer community, what could you do in 18 months or less to show that you could apply AI or do a foundational uh, look at AI in some way, shape, or form? And we hope that those, the idea there, there is to turn those things, get those things on contract in less than 90 days. So we've set up the, the broad agency announcement to do that. We'd like to really tap into the universities and commercial world uh, to help us do this. And then um, 
uh, move out on some major programs in AI uh, over the next year. We're hiring more program managers at DARPA in the AI field, and uh, this will be really, I hope, come next summer. Uh, I hope we'll have another conference like ERI focused on what we're going to do moving forward in AI. Obviously, ERI and what we're doing here in the AI uh, uh, initiative are complementary, very complementary. Some of the work that you all are doing under ERI is, uh, is AI-focused, and that's a good thing. So uh, how these things come together, we'll, we'll look forward to hearing that uh, more in the future. So finally, just finishing up, I want to congratulate this community for coming together and focusing on this critical resurgence in electronics. Uh, I think um, it's important to the country, it's important to our national security, our economy, uh, and, uh, and we'll be on that chart someday of, of things DARPA started and, uh, and worked with its performer community to make happen for this nation. Um, I also want to introduce Bill Chappell, have him come back up here and tell you what his vision is for ERI. Those of you who know Bill know he's uh, deeply professional, wicked smart, and uh, extremely committed to bringing the commercial and defense sectors together to work on technologies for our national security. So with that, I want to turn it over to Bill. Thank you.